I want to say here, and if everybody will stay put just for a moment, I want to tell why that I think it's so important. We've come to this convention from every corner of this nation. We're the only organization with a structure nationwide with a delivery system that can force the large companies of this country that buy nationwide to compete. We're the only organization with the courage to wage the economic battle. As I said, people could have 100% of the production put together in an organization, but I don't believe there's another organization in this country that have the courage to wage the economic battle then. I really don't, folks. I don't know of one. And now to the strategy of what we do. I told the people this morning that met at 8 o'clock that we're calling the shock troops, I guess, that are going to do many things. They had a specific assignment. And I said, I want us to hit the road so hard Monday morning, turning this country upside down, that I want us to take advantage of what I know the situation will be. And that is people that might attack us in the press, or companies that would fight and design new strategy, or whatever it might be. But you know, it's getting close enough to Christmas, and close enough to New Year's, a lot of those people are gonna be on vacation. And they probably won't be back till the 5th of January in a lot of cases. And then they'll have to get their own work in order. And when they come back, I'd like to have our production united in this country to where the large companies have to come to us to get part of their needs at least. And then I can guarantee you we won't be under the market We'll be leading the market. I can tell you that the dairy department has got an amazing contract right now that they could fill from a, another critical area that we haven't talked about. But in order to be competitive in the area they take it out, we've got to have more production in there to take advantage of it. I haven't heard personally any complaints about the cattle price for a long time in our bargaining. The hog prices have been improved as the volume is built. Lamb's sheep program was a good example, but it didn't build like it should, but they're building it. You'd have thought everybody would have knocked down the doors to get there. With the direct exports, I told you, that we'd improved our position of less cost of about 20 cents a bushel, at least 18 cents. And I'm not going to stand here to try to tell you to go out there and sell on a price advantage. But I'm telling you that what we'll do, you put the volume behind us and we'll lead the prices up when the companies call us. We won't take the same price or a lower price, I can tell you that. And that is a pledge. But without the production to do it with, we can't do it. And I want to leave you with a couple of little hints of how you can do it. I think everybody ought to go if they're hogs, producers, cattle, grain, whatever it might be, go by the desk before you leave here tonight and we have farms filled out or blank forms on the production of cost, uh, cost of production forms. Now what can those be used for? I don't know a better thing to give or to use. You don't have to have it. If you don't have it, don't wait till you get one, you know, three months. If you have one in the county, you can reprint them mighty fast. But I don't think there's anything that'll help you more in signing a new member or getting a member to participate or a member to pay their dues. 
and let them figure the cost of production on their own production. And that was brought to mind the other night, and I'm going to call on him in a short time because Montana's coming up here. I don't know what they got in mind, but they're going to sing a little song. And they had the idea there. And I think it's an excellent idea. The other thing is we have to multiply ourselves. Have somebody when they seem favorable. Don't just talk to them. Ask them to get three or four or five more people together. When that night, not a long plan ahead of time. No, not a plan a long ahead of time by any means. Because if you plan a long time ahead for a meeting, I'll guarantee you most of the people will forget when it's going to be. You can do it that morning and have a meeting that night. And you can multiply yourselves that way. And you can multiply yourselves so fast that it will be unbelievable for you to realize how fast it really is. So I want to urge you to realize that you have to multiply yourself and multiply yourself. And the other is a missionaries, where we'll ask some of you, or a lot of you, we'll call a leader in 10 counties or in one county and say, we want 10 people to go Tuesday morning and stay till Friday morning, each sleep together in the same hotel or motel, and contact the producers in that given county. We won't ask you to do it every week, but we'll ask you to do it several times, maybe this winter. The people that have done it like it, they learn from others. And you go back well instructed. And I want to then try to impress with this one, one time what we're talking about in the Commodity Minuteman structure and to show you how it can be done. We've started it in grain. It'll be expanded to other commodities. And would you turn off the lights for just a moment? You've seen it before. I want to impress this on your mind and leave it as a last thought. Can you turn the lights down just a moment? That is a commodity minute man structure in grain. I would not want it to be used if it were not for the per point there, area grain director phone. Two things break down volunteer workers that they have to do too much and they can't answer the questions. Everybody on that commodity minute man system should be instructed if there's any problems call the director of grain, the area grain director, and the phone number, and there's a man there that's his aide. We have them in almost every place in the country. That will be a part of bargaining, putting the blocks together and everything else that can answer the question. If you hear of a problem, instead of trying to answer it, call that number and they'll be asked calling them to answer it. But the power of that, how many names are on there? Well, you know it because we've been over it several times, haven't we? 66 names. First, it takes one man that Earhart Finkston, or lady that Earhart Finkston was talking about in the county, that will accept the responsibility of getting four community chairmen. And that's what it is in their own community. Three assistant community chairmen, three assistant community chairmen, and then they have four under them to inventory the grain first, and this is applied to other commodities the same. But what about 66 people that have 15,000 bushel of grain? How much is that, folks? Allowed. How much is it? In a county, isn't it? One million bushel in a county. And we have organization membership in about 13 to 1400 grain counties. A thousand of those counties 
with a million bushel. What is that, folks? How much? One billion bushel. And how long would it take from this convention and everywhere else to do it? That could be done by the fifth day of January, or Larry, of January while everybody else is having a good time Christmas and New Year's, and we can still be Christmas and New Year's at home and get it done, can't we, while they're off on vacation. Right? Do the same thing in milk? What do you think? I know they would. And hogs, cattle, right on down the line. And you know the, the difference in bargaining, we've been having to call them and trying to talk them out of a little more, and then we knew, move the production into a different pattern, so we create competition, so everybody tries to beat us then. And a lot of the prices, when they say we're under the price, they quote the price a few hours after the companies went up because we moved some out, didn't they? If they could have had it the same minute, the same hour, or the same day, they'd have found that we'd have done a very good job of bargaining. But if we start saying, yes, we've got it, but it's going to cost you a nickel more, what's going to happen? We're not going to be behind the market. We're going to be leading it continuously, aren't we? And that's the way that the goals can be reached. Our price goals, to me, are worth it. And I want to leave one illustration it sobered you the other night. And I talked about in the Depression days, as I understand and can remember a little, but not too much. It took two or three years to go broke. I've seen farmers hang on for a couple of decades. But you know, it's hitting so fast and so hard now that you don't realize how fast it's happening. We talked about bankers and specific examples that are selling farmers and ranchers out. I'm not pulling for a motion. I want you to put yourself in your proper position. Put on one side of the sheet, well, the first example I like to use is that if you put down 10 years ago what you thought you'd be worth at the end of a lifetime, you know, this year's expenses would have been a lot more than what you thought in the year of 1976. The expenses alone will be more than what you thought you'd have been worth 10 years ago at the end of a lifetime of farming. But now bring it up to date. Put down your short-term cre credit at the PCA or the bank or FHA. How much you've got borrowed, how many notes you've got. And then over on the other hand, not the figures you give the banker or the or PCA man, but put down what you really believe your livestock equipment grain would bring. And my guess is you're going to be shocked just as you were shocked on the cost of production figures. Because you're going to see the end result in your minds right on your own paper in many cases of what the cost of production figures showed. And that is, it's just about going to balance out it. It would take all the livestock, cows, equipment, grain, hogs, whatever you've got, to equal out. That is the best illustration I know. I could talk and repeat myself. The only thing that I can tell you, the system, the structure is there. And I can promise you that we have the courage without fail. You put the 30% of the production together and we'll have those 10 county meetings for Operation 30. And we'll vote on our prices and we'll announce those prices to the world. And if they don't pay them, I can tell you there'll be no lack of courage to call a holding action, an all-out holding action. And you know how many days you are as dairymen from a fair price? 
from $12.75 a hundred fluid milk. There's not more than four days fluid milk supply, and that's stretching it. How many days you are as cattlemen from a price or hogmen? There's not more than seven days total meat supply ahead. And some of the grain it wouldn't take very long. But we've got to put the production together because a holding action can only serve the purpose of being the clincher now. We used it for recognition, and we used it to get written contracts. Now we use it for the clincher. And all I can pledge to you, I'll do all I can. We'll call on the staff not to just work a short five-day week, but we'll call on the staff to do everything they possibly can. And all I ask you, let's come back to the convention next year, knowing that in a period of a short time, and I hope and plead with you, it'll be not longer than the 5th of January that we'll be so far out ahead that nobody can ever catch us. But we've got to tie it down so we can come back to the convention and say, together we did it because we needed it, because it was right, and because we were willing to fight for fairness, justice, and respect. And don't ever apologize for a holding action the press has asked me today in an interview here. And I am not going to apologize for a holding action in any way anymore. Let it be even be insinuated because it's no different than business putting a price tag on their products or labor striking for a wage, and we as American farmers have got the same right and should exercise it if need be done. So I say to you, I had thought if we hadn't been so late that I was going to be at a door here and I was going to try to shake hands with every one of you individually, and that handshake would be a pledge that we're going out of here Monday morning and we're going to pledge that we're going to use every hour in the next 90 days, every minute we possibly can to drive home this clincher victory, Operation 30, to be a reality. But I want to extend my hand this way to you with that pledge. Will you make the same pledge to do everything you can, not for me, not for the NFO, but for yourself? There's my hand. How many of you are willing to do it? And let's go out determined to do it, and let's don't quit until we get it done. And how many of you got a hand to stick out that you'll do the same thing, and I've got my pledge there? Every one of you have, please stand up and have Extend that hand, not because you want to, but together with a handshake of determination, a handshake of friendship, a handshake of fellowship, and a handshake of determination. God bless you. When my be here, and we'd like to introduce the group where the Montana State Gung Ho NFO Self Preservation Group. And we have a message for you. We're going to sing it through once, and then we want you to all stand up and join in. And let's have a show of unity and a show of dignity and a show of self-respect. One man's hand can't tear a system down. One man's hand can't tear a system down. One man's eyes can't see the way ahead. One man's eyes can't see the way ahead. Two man's eyes can't see the way ahead. But if two and two and fifteen make a million, we'll see that day come round. We'll see. One man's voice can't 
shout to make them hear. Set a farmer free. One man's love can set a farmer free. One man's hand build can't tear a system down. One man's voice can shout to make them hear. One man's voice can shout to make them hear. Two man's voice can 